So, Mr. Nishant, uh, here are the batteries. And uh, one thing I like about them is that they're very colorful to look at. They're not just uh, uh, whitish blocks. And I really like that about them. Uh, but I want to know more about the internals of the battery. Uh, tell us about the number of cells used, uh, the charge cycles, the chemistry of the battery, what BMS system you're using, uh, thermal management system. Please give us a bit more knowledge about that. Yeah, so we started the EV batteries manufacturing since last one year. So we started with uh, initially with these two batteries, which are meant for medium sp speed uh, vehicles. Mm. So in terms of the chemistry, we have done a lot of uh, theoretical as well as simulation as well as practical analysis on various chemistries as well as the various uh, types of the cells. There are right. like, you know, talk about uh, pouch cells are there and uh, uh, cylindrical cells and prismatic and in terms of chemistry LCO, NMC, LFP are there. Right. So we have chosen NMC cylindrical 18650 cells that to 3C and 4C rated uh, cells actually mm. to meet a battery uh, deliver output of 1, 1C and 1.5C to enhance the charge and discharge cycles. Like mm. normally NMC cells are known for 300, 500, 600 life cycles. When right. we talk about the life of 80%, mm. I mean they, they may come for 2000, 3000 cycles also, but the efficiency will be coming down. So because we use 3C and 4C rated cells, which are which can endure uh, high temperatures at high discharge. Mm. So and uh, limit the controller and uh, motor to one, one and a half C. Mm. So that effectively like you know the life cycle is enhanced to 1000 200 cycles even with 80 percent uh, efficiency actually right so that is almost giving us uh, 50 thousand 60 thousand 70 thousand kilometer range on road uh, range actually okay. so in terms of the BMS uh, what uh, we have done is uh, whatever the parameters are there so although the the hardware is uh, procured from the uh, like you know external third party supplier but the entire parameters so there those simulations are uh, like you know the input uh, the parameters so we get from the R&D team located from IIT Hyderabad so right. they do continuous uh, series of simulations for various parameters right. it could be charging at so and so condition discharge at so and so condition casing uh, thickness are different mm. internal packaging is different there are like you know for packaging we use three four materials mm. external ambient conditions are changing now like you know there is a slight wind movement temperature is very pleasant mm. but it could be other way around also. how it reacts to the weather yeah yeah how it reacts to the weather and all mm. even like you know now this air is very dry like you, know, you can have vapor and all mm. so there are like you know continuous simulation works we do even uh, like you know the, those are like phd and mtech students or project students sitting at iit Hyderabad. Right. so out of that simulation the outcome is like you know which goes as an input to our bms Mm. So the hardware is one thing, mm. like you know, the, the, the entire parameterization integration is happening in house actually. Right. So after the integration also again we test the, the PCB boards. Mm. So currently we are using uh, active balancing uh, uh, BMS boards for whether it is low speed or medium speed or high speed. Right. So we are yet to implement the, the communication protocol, the, the, it's, it's local. But we want to make it like, you know, IoT based the communication protocol. Uh, so that may happen uh, very soon. Mm. So that is in terms of the, the, the BMS parameterization as well as the inter cell connections and everything. So the why we choose uh, NMC cylindrical also like, you know, see in, for Indian conditions, then uh, the heat becomes a big issue mm. in, uh, for our ambient conditions. Mm. Uh, so whether the thermal management system there or not, I mean, that is a secondary improvement uh, we are making. Mm. So beyond that, like, you know, the natural air gaps uh, everywhere, right, from the cell to cell, the packaging and the what kind of materials, what kind of epoxy plate we use, EVF foam and the coatings inside, which enhance or either way, like, you know, if we want to heat up the battery for some cold condition, like, you know, the the way we do the coating inside, the thermal conductivity we, we play actually with the casings. Mm. Uh, so that is actually is affecting the life cycle, the performance up to 20, 30 percent. Like you know, all these uh, different different uh, packaging materials or the playing the the material qualities or thicknesses actually. Okay. So apart from this, now uh, this in this battery, like you know, what we want to add is like. Uh, this is a battery which will get launched into our e-pluto only in the next uh, one or two months right so better algorithms are there which can give more accurate uh, state of charge mm. and apart from that like you know we want to implement we are aspiring i mean the testing is going on mm. we are aspirating uh, uh, to implement uh, a hybrid uh, uh, thermal cooling option wow. like, you know which is a uh, mix of air as well as the thermoelectric peltier cooling right so through the simulations we are able to notice some hot spots that you know this is where uh, the maximum heat is getting generated so sometimes like you know air cooling might not be sufficient so we will implement some uh, one or two or three four depending on the uh, 
how many hotspots we have. Mm. So Peltier uh, cooling options, which is more like a based on thermoelectric, okay. and whatever is uh, generated there, and then it removes uh, from a more from a air cooling kind of option. Right. So what, how much air cooling we have to do, how much Peltier? The, those studies are like you know those uh, tests are still going on, but within two months, I am sure we will be able to implement in this this battery. So this, uh, so currently these batteries, what clients are telling us is on website we are giving 80 kilometer range. So I mean people are saying like you know they are getting a range of 75 to 85. Some people have quoted 90 kilometers also. So this battery is uh, uh, will deliver more power to give much higher torque much higher speeds mm. and even in any condition actually any uh, operating condition mm. we want to achieve 100 kilometer plus i mean it may give 120 kilometer also okay i mean uh, so that is the objective so we have made so many changes mm. the casing is uh, uh, metallic like right. you know i mean uh, the form factor is different the form right. factor is not just changed because of the more for the aesthetic appeal it has a uh, design element mm. like, you know in terms of overall heat transfer in terms of the uh, because when these batteries go inside, mm. they can't breathe pro properly. Mm. So when you see our batteries, like you know, there are proper air, uh, natural air convection is given from the bottom. Mm. Some uh, gaps we have left intentionally. Mm. It is not uh, left for some other purpose. Mm. It is to show that, like you know, there is some air. Air is flowing around these casings actually. Yes, initially for three months, six months, no one will report. But mm. this is very important for Indian ambient conditions in the long run. When we want to see that these vehicles are functioning for three years, five years, seven years, mm. because that is the the regular IC engine automotive uh, companies, uh, they've set a very good standard, right. I can say. Right. I mean, any component like, you know, I mean, except some mechanical components, but the major components, mm. they work like, you know, after five years, six years, seven years, they may require some maintenance, mm. but uh, the, the complete failures are not there in the right. industry. So the people, although electric vehicle is a new technology, the, the, there are a lot of fancy words. Mm. But as a consumer, he will expect the same thing. Mm. Like, you know, I bought a battery, I bought a vehicle, minimum two years, three years, four years, five years, six years. Mm. And people think about reselling also, because this, this is very important from the financial perspective. Right. So the entire cost is coming from the battery. Like, you know, batteries are nowadays occupying almost 40, 50 percent uh, cost. Mm. That's the reason since last two years, we had been building our expertise more on the battery, BMS technology, packaging, mm. even like, you know, the gaps, the mm. way we do the cutting, uh, welding, the mm. casings, because casings also we are manufacturing. Mm. Earlier we used to give as a job work, mm. but we started doing the manufacturing of our own casings. Mm. The reason is everything is playing a role. Like mm. tomorrow when we give IP65 uh, rating or IP67 or IP54, mm. waterproof or fireproof, mm. the casing is ma majorly playing the role. Mm. I mean, we, we are training our uh, dealers, uh, technicians, by keeping hosting them at our factories for one month, two months. It's not one day, two day training. Mm. This company does not believe of uh, like, you know, one day, two day work kind of workshops. Because mm. maybe in the regular uh, IC in engine industry, because the ecosystem is there, like every right. mechanic is well aware of everything. Right. But here the training has to be its minimum of two, three months because they have to understand everything from ground up. Right. Because this is one major problem we have noticed. Mm. Even if you make the vehicle so good, but sometimes issues will come. Actually. Mm that is in the battery or controller or motor. Mm. So that is one more uh, program we have launched for our uh, dealers, mm. in, especially in the batteries also. Any connector is gone wrong, any, any the battery gone into completely suddenly into a switch off mode, mm. sleep mode. Mm. So we are training them how to bring the battery into life. life. Even like, you know, some, uh, some BMS has gone wrong, how yeah. to change the BMS, yeah. small, small connections. Mm. So this will avoid so much of turnaround time. What we hear is if some battery is gone wrong in the in, from the market it is taking two months time three months time for the replacement or or the service mm. this is what we want to bring it down to 24 hours 48 hours 72 hours some meaningful time mm. then we'll be focusing on other components also the critical components like motor charger so the next thing we want to enter into the in-house uh, testing and then design into the assembly is the uh, chargers mm. so because the, that is the next series of element like you know what we see I mean, currently we are buying chargers right. in local from right. India but we are buying Somewhere else. Okay. So at least initially we want to build a lot of expertise on the charger uh, testing and servicing, mm. right from the component level. Like okay. you know, it could be fuse or MOV or uh, transformer or PCB, mm. IC or fan. Anything going wrong, like you know, we as a company who is giving the vehicle to the client or dealer, mm. we should be in a position to change those small small components. Mm. And then if if required, we'll get into the manufacturing of the chargers also. Right. So uh, some. 
टू व्हीलर ई वी मैन्युफैक्चर इन इंडिया आर मूविंग टूवर्ड्स यूजिंग लिथियम आई ऑन फॉस्फेट बैटरीज क्लेमिंग दैट दे आर बेटर स्यूटेड फॉर इंडियन कंडीशन दैट द चार्ज साइकिल्स आर मोर स्टफ लाइक दैट सो इज योर कंपनी थिंकिंग अलॉन्ग दीज लाइन या सो प्योर एनर्जी और प्योर ई वी प्योर लिथियम लाइक यू नो सो वी आर बीन यूजिंग एल एफ पी बैटरीज लाइक बोथ सिलेंड्रिकल एंड अदर फॉर्म फैक्टर्स Uh, in storage solutions like you know we have built 50 kwh 100 kwh 200 kwh these mm. kind of big batteries mm. even 5 kwh for home appliances with lfp so yes definitely lfp cells or lfp chemistry is better suited for uh, high temperatures and long discharge high discharge as well as like you know higher life cycle it mm. can give practically 2000 to 2500 life cycles mm. also but the major bottleneck in two wheeler is the the amount of space availability uh then the other question is like you know do we want to lose this portable battery option mm. so this we want to carefully observe and study more from the client it is right. i mean it's not a technical decision technical decision is made by the company right. you know we have been uh, uh selling like you know lfp batteries in much larger scale mm. and for much larger uh, capacities mm. in two wheeler it's maximum 2 kws 3 kws in future it may go to 5 right. so those kind of batteries we have made so we have a very good understanding from bottoms to top right it's so more from the people would expect yes, a portable removable battery portable removable battery mm. are they ready that you know it is occupying too much volume is the volume is going to be available in two wheeler mm. uh then the question is like you know life cycle versus uh, it's a very good question important question mm. life cycle versus this compromise right. which is more important from the commercial as well as the from the user experience right let's say 1000 cycles or 2000 cycles mm. or can we improve within L- nmc itself mm. can we improve the life cycle by making our entire design approach in a different way mm. like you know you offer 3c 4c rated cells mm. for 1c 1 and 1/2c motor or uh, controller mm. so definitely your life cycle will go up mm. so definitely it can sustain a higher uh, temperature conditions sorry high, higher uh, ambi- uh, temperature or higher discharge uh, conditions right so we need to play around with multiple options here rather than directly coming to a conclusion that you know we can give today as on today also tomorrow we can start giving lfp batteries wow but how does it affect the user mm. like you know on day to day basis because there are no charging stations mm. i don't know like you know how many years it will take uh, to establish charging station on par with our petrol pump stations right so that is where i feel like you know currently we are giving this is a 2.5 kwh battery this is easy to lift mm. i mean uh, by even like you know a teenager or a female or anyone right like you know he can carry it or no person yeah i mean uh, in the lift like you know or he can we are anyway giving a ch- charging option from here and here mm. so these kind of batteries so how much because this is giving 80 km 100 km or 120 km range be, depending on the operating conditions let's say 1000 cycles is there right so 1 lakh km even if i take 50% of that as a conservative number 50000 60000 km mm. so that i feel is a very good number uh, for the two wheeler from the from the other components perspective mm. like you know there are so many mechanical components so overall 60000 km to 1 lakh km mm. at this juncture i feel it's a very good mm. uh from the giving keeping the portable option and less weight option mm. but we will be open because we have developed lot of expertise on electric batteries mm. and uh, we anyway will be giving for the evs but for four wheelers or trucks we want to develop batteries mm. so there will be implementing the electric batteries right uh, which require because they are giving on board cooling requires mm. l- lot more volume actually mm. so using lfp cells makes uh, more sense right. in those kind of heavy and applications heavy lifters okay. okay so a couple of pain points that we've noticed in the ev industry especially the two wheeler industry uh, is number one uh, you cannot get the accurate state of charge of the vehicle uh, two wheelers also face this problem a lot uh, that's one thing and the other one is the lack of uh, remote telematics uh, you know diagnosing the battery's health again my e2o faces this problem my car faces this problem Uh, two wheelers also face this problem in fact the two wheel industry there is uh, thing i mean it's totally uh, unheard of so and i feel that getting uh, having that telematics information getting that battery health information would benefit you also because then you would be able to make improvements in the future so what is your what are your thoughts on these uh, problems and what solutions could you offer so our thoughts like you know are completely aligned with the perception or whatever you have mentioned like you know so these are the really pain points like you know there are no see one is about the telematics but even if you have telematics what about the see these these are again boiled down to the fundamental equations like you know soc soh like you know there are multiple uh, uh, 
like you know devices which offer but in our true sense what we have noticed is like you know whatever the devices we have been testing the the kind of algorithms which are embedded are not accurate to give out the uh, true output mm. so that is where we felt like you know let us work on the algorithms mm. so because here the algorithms have to be linked in an nonlinear manner to the the current it is discharging the internal resistance it has to read mm. the the live voltage it has to read and then we have to build these algorithms mm. integrate in this uh, in in co- in co working with the our iot suppliers mm. so we we have uh, been testing this telematics mm. on our uh, scooters currently mm. the only reason why we didn't implement although i agree with that like you know there are uh, in even in these batteries there are no currently whatever the estimates we are giving they are approximate they are not 100% accurate right in a approximate manner like you know client can know but it is not like pinpoint yeah. like, often you know, they are far from accurate yes mm. so it's it's like you know if it is 30% it uh the it's not exactly 30% it right. could be 20% or it could be 35 exactly. there is a, there is a it's it's not yeah i agree yeah so to pinpoint that like you know we need to first understand for what application we are designing these batteries so accordingly we need to develop the algorithm so that is what the team at iit hyderabad is again like you know dedicated team mm. which is working exclusively on the there are three sets of algorithms we are working mm. one is the accurate estimation of soc mm. accurate estimation of soh mm. because soh is mm. very very like you know complex to estimate mm. because it depends on so many parameters mm. it is not just one parameter it cannot say that you know if the battery is uh, getting charged to 67 rather than 67.2 mm. we cannot say that you know the the life cycle is reduced by some 0.1% right it has to do with the internal resistance it has to do with the the ah to whatever efficiency it has to do with the uh, the temperature performance mm. on the soh mm. so we are working on these algorithms soc soh mm. as well as the range prediction right so range prediction algorithm again depends upon the complete form factor drag coefficient then the the thermal performance the electrical performance of the battery mm. then the multiple efficiencies of voltage controller and motor mm. at different voltages and different uh, amperes actually mm. and different temperatures so the algorithms i mean uh, see linear algorithms we can implement and start straight for, straight forward offer to the clients but as you said again some lot of deviation will be there for the indian ambient conditions mm. because the here the the ambience is literally affecting the live performance as well as this uh, the displays actually mm. so it may take us something like 3 to 6 months uh, to uh, embed all these algorithms mostly in our bms mm. as well as in the controller right but uh, i feel uh, and i firmly agree with you that you know this these are the uh, painful points which are there in the ecosystem especially mm. clients have lot of confusion on the like you know how much range is left mm. how much uh, percentage in the battery is left because initial uh, so called 30 40% delivers 80% range and last 40% sometimes doesn't even deliver 10 20% yes i agree i mean these these are the points uh, which we are trying to address but we 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 have taken a bottoms up approach because the, the if if apart from the telematics whatever the I mean, when we talk, talk about algorithm what it is it is a mix of mathematics and physics and chemistry to me so if i don't correct that whatever is the sophisticated electronic device i embed mm. again it might give a wrong information to the client as well right. as my r&d team right so there you have it you heard all about the internals of the battery from mr nishant himself and uh, it all it sounds really exciting the stuff that they are doing and uh, i for one can't wait to see uh, what they do in the future so thank you so much mr nishant thank you for taking the yeah, time to answer our questions much. thank you thanks